Christian Parenting. We just celebrated a wedding in our family, and we want to tell you all about it. Join us today on Family Vision. Hi, my name is Ray Reno. Welcome to Family Vision with my parents, Dr. Rob and Amy Reno. Strengthening families through practical, encouraging, and real conversations. Rob Reno here with Visionary Family Ministries, here with my bride, Amy. It's been a little while since we've both been able to be here in the studio together, but we've had good reason for our crazy schedule over the past couple months. Our daughter, Lissy, got married first week of September, and we are still in some ways in the afterglow of that amazing day. And we thought today we would just share some stories, some moments, some reflections with you. But before we jump in, I want to encourage you to check out an online parenting event coming up October 15th from our ministry partners at Christian Parenting. It is the Perfectly Imperfect online event. There's a great team of speakers and topics talking about parenting preschoolers through adult kids, taking on tough topics of sexuality, helping our kids handle their money, navigating the crazy world of tech, and most importantly, how to help your children and your whole family grow in their faith. So the website is perfectlyimperfect.org. That's perfectlyimperfect.org. You can get your tickets for this. You can have an all-access pass to the speakers and the messages starting October 15th, and you can uh, watch those messages anytime till the end of the year. And we'll be telling you more about that uh, in the next episode as well. Okay, honey, let's talk about this wedding day. First, you were gorgeous. You had the opportunity to sing in the wedding. This is one of my favorite stories. You <laughs> and Lainey. Just a little bit. <laughs> you and Lainey, our 17-year-old daughter, sang a song called The Blessing. And you sang it at the end of the ceremony. And later during the reception, one of the guests, this was a friend of the groom's family, so I, I didn't know them, but I was talking with them. And they said, now, were those two of your daughters singing there okay. at the end? And I said, well, my daughter and my wife. Yeah, but you right. were just stunning. I just keep not <laughs> – I'm still wondering, are you – being completely honest with that story, I can't believe that. But very nice thought. That's wonderful. That was great. That, yeah, well, you that were he unbelievable. thought that. <laughs> that um, well, well, I guess the hair and makeup was worth it that day. That's great. <laughs> um, well, tell me what was one of yeah. your special memories from the day, or just the time oh, leading up to the wedding. There are so many; it is hard to encapsulate. But at one point. Um, you know, the month of August really turned into just intense wedding prep. And for those of you who understand weddings and the costs of weddings these days, you will appreciate the fact that we had a barn to do a wedding in, but it wasn't a venue, which meant that we were really responsible for bringing our own tables and our own chairs and our own dishes and let alone the decorations and the, you know, how we were going to we did, I did get a caterer, caterer to save myself some sanity. Well done, by the way. <laughs> but it uh, was wonderful. It was Cuisine America. I can't say enough about it for those of you in the local area. Cuisine America was wonderful. Um, but it was really quite an event. It was just taking, I felt like, every waking minute of my mental energy to keep planning all of this. And at some point, you, you hear this a lot in our culture, like what happened to weddings? They used to be you know, more simple and why does this have to take so much time? And I was kind of falling into that a little bit. Like, yeah, that's right. And then it was really encouraging because the the Lord, I, I felt like through my quiet times and the Holy Spirit just said, you know, these are only going to happen. You know, we have seven children, so we get to do this, hopefully, if God wills, seven times. But they are pivotal life events. And I started thinking about it, how, you know, Jesus's first miracle was that a wedding. It was a really big deal. And we think our weddings are complicated. Well, it used to last a week, you know? So so we come by this very um, naturally through history, you know, that weddings are supposed to be really grand events because you're celebrating this incredibly important transition. So I think part of my special memory is that when the Lord really helped me embrace all of the the work and everything is just that we were really celebrating something that's so special that we don't get to really won't be able to do that often and it was glorious it was wonderful everything 
exceeded our expectations, and just having that perspective that we were、um, having this very momentous celebration of these two wonderful. Our, you know, our daughter Lissy and Bond, and being able to celebrate them starting their life together, and also celebrating what God has done through this institution、right. of marriage. And I have to thank my wedding coordinator for that too. Her name was Mari,、um, but Mari had a great moment with me where where she I realized how important. Um, this position is when she just kind of came alongside, as you know, she came alongside the last two weeks to kind of help us, which was wonderful. But、um, she just came alongside to remind and said, you know, all this is about glorifying God, and it really is. That's what a wedding ceremony、right. should do. So I thought, wow, a wedding coordinator can mean so much more than just、That's、coordinating、right. colors and dishes. <laughs> well, you mentioned the possibility of seven of these in. Our life now. Of course, our oldest son, our W, got married a year ago to Emily, and now Lissy just three weeks ago to Bond. But、um, I want to clarify that wasn't a year ago; that was eleven months ago. So it's two weddings in one year. So it's a little bit. You know what I mean? Like it really. Yeah, October twenty twenty and September twenty twenty one. Yeah. So it was a lot of change for an eleven month time period. That I will. Right, but we, we have four boys and three girls, and so the idea of seven weddings. One thing I learned for sure is that the wedding of the son. Is very different than the wedding of the daughter. Now, not just financially, obviously, but as a dad, like the giving of the son and the giving of the daughter, two totally separate things. Like with their son, if if he's following the Lord, he's ready to get married. He's got a godly young woman. They're ready to get married. I was with our Debbie. I was kind of like, all right, kid. Well, go get him. This is going to be great. And I mean, I was excited and praying him out, but it was sort of like, all right, you're ready. But then, okay, but that's not how I was with the son, right? Much more well, emotional. Well, the opposite sex opp- parent、right. has that's important the, for people to understand the trauma. Yeah, it is very. It's very different. You know, I, I was much more emotionally. And first of all, I think the first wedding is also、right. very different because your family is going through that change that just seems okay. No longer, this child is no longer under your roof or under your care, and that is quite a change for the whole family. I think for us having the second wedding so close, it was、uh, a little easier. Like people kind of accept, okay, now we know what this looks like a little bit. You know, we're not saying goodbye completely. We are gaining another child into our life. We're, we're a little more aware of what that can look、right. like. But yes, the emotional, there's a big emotional difference between you and me versus son versus yeah, daughter. Yeah. So there's a huge emotional difference in in the giving of the daughter. Uh, but you know, one of the questions that I would get leading up to the wedding, of course, is, "Are you stressed? Are you stressed out?"、Um, and y- there was stress on planning and logistics and all of that. But but honestly, at, at the end of the day, I, I wasn't stressed out going into the wedding because the only thing to really get stressed and anxious about when it comes to the wedding of a child or particularly a daughter is what kind of a man am I giving my daughter to. And with Bond, he loves the Lord. He loves Lissy. We know his family. So a father's anxiety is ninety nine point nine 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 percent tied to who is this man that I'm giving my daughter to. So it was it was an honor to be able to、oh. put、uh, her hand in his. I'm laughing at that because yeah, that's not exactly what my stress was tied to, yeah, <laughs> which so, was more like, is the appetite charcuterie going to happen on time? All those little logistics. I don't even know what、things. charcuterie. I, know, I don't know how to spell I know, it. I don't even know. I, know I still don't, don't know what it is. It's like a wood block of food or something. The level of of the sequencing of all the events and all the things you have to think about causes the mother of the bride a lot of significant stress. And you did awesome, by the way. Well, I I know that I I. Realized how important family and friends are. Another thing, I think weddings,、um, funerals really teach you how important it is to, you know, rely on your family and and friends. And and I really could not have done. People like, oh, you did a great job. Well, I just feel very humbled because it was so much of the people coming beside me and taking care of things that I could not do. And and. Just the value of wonderful family, and wonderful friends. Another thing that really was a highlight for me was that rehearsal dinner that Bonds,、um, of course, his family put on. But one thing that you don't really know going into the wedding weekend、um, is 
you, you're still learning a lot, you know, because you learn going through that weekend, like you get to meet the groomsmen and you get to meet people that you haven't met yet that you're actually going to all share this wonderful experience with. And and we did this, you know, at our W's rehearsal and it was neat to see it with um, Bond's parents putting on that rehearsal dinner, but they did open sharing, you know, where people are getting up and sharing stories about, you know, stories about Bond and Lissy's having her friend share a story about her. And and just some of the things that we learned at that rehearsal dinner just blessed my heart so much. I mean, Bond's dad's story about him in junior high, the type of boy that he was, things that I, even though they've been dating for a long time, I didn't know right. about That story Bond. was he was in a track race yes. and was favored to do very well in the race. And uh, all the folks, it was cross country, so all the folks were coming across the finish line and their Bond was not there. Well, it's because he had stopped back in the race to help a friend uh, that, that had fallen and as a result kind of given up his... Uh, opportunity to to get that high place. Yeah, gave up the opportunity. But then the coolest part about that story was that when an adult came to help his friend, he got up and finished the race full speed like it never had happened. And that was such a precious story that we got to hear about Bond that I don't know if we would have heard outside of that occasion. Then also just hearing his roommates speak of him and telling some stories that were so encouraging. So I was very blessed in particular by the beginning of the whole weekend with the rehearsal dinner and what was shared there. It just made me even, I was already excited for them to get married, but it did make me even more excited. I was concerned about my emotional breaking points. Um, You know, I had a lot of roles to play, obviously father, the bride, but they also asked me to officiate the the ceremony. So I have to lead the rehearsal. um, I have to walk her down the aisle. One of the things that I really loved is we had a because this was outside, we had a very, very long walk. Yes, it was very And I long. loved it. I just was so happy for that moment. And, um, you know, there were a couple times on the walk that, you know, rather than just keep my eyes straight ahead, I just turn and kind of look at, look at her to try to uh, soak in that moment as mm-hmm. much as I could. And people have asked, well, if you officiated, how did all that work? So the way it worked is that Bond's father, Brad, was up in the front with the groomsmen, normally where the pastor would be. And I walked Lissy down the aisle, and when we got up to the front, um, Brad said, who gives this woman to be married to my son? And I said, her mother and I, and I hugged and kissed Lissy and gave uh, her over to Bond. And then Brad sat down, and then I took the uh, pastor officiant uh, uh, s- uh, place, uh, and it was, it was unbelievable. You know, during the ceremony, one of the scriptures that they had chosen to have read and to have me talk about was from Ecclesiastes chapter 4, where it talks about two are better than one. Uh, and then it concludes in verse 12 there by saying that a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And so one of the things that I did in the ceremony is to have uh, two cords with me. It contrasts the strength of a two-stranded cord with the strength of a three-stranded cord. And so I had the cord of two strands and grabbed each end. And if you pull a cord of two strands apart, it unravels and, and pulls apart. But if there's a cord that has three strands in it, if you pull two, it pulls apart a little bit, but that third strand holds it. And the, the principle there in the scripture is the centrality and the need to have Christ woven through a marriage relationship, that it's not enough just to have two people who love each other, two people who are committed to each other, but it's two people who love Christ and love each other, two mm-hmm. people who are committed to mm-hmm. Christ and committed to each other. What was your highlight from the ceremony? Well, to be honest, the ceremony itself was probably the highlight for me of the whole event, and your um, message was just wonderful. But there were a the few things that stood out that really, in, during that ceremony, that really spoke to me. One was Bond's independence when um, the wedding coordinator, you know, typically the groom is supposed to come in first. And he had told um, Mari that he didn't want to come in first. He wanted to come in last. I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. Well, he, he came in last so that he could greet all the groomsmen and give them a hug and kind of thank them for being there to stand up with him. And I, I really thought that was special and unique. The other thing that would made it so special is that Lissy had chosen this song, How Beautiful, by Twyla Paris, which was the song at our wedding. Right. She chose it because it was sung at our wedding. And she had my nieces, Dar and Margot, they were playing the strings as she walked down to that song 
with the strings. And then during the ceremony, having Lainey, her sister, sing How Beautiful was probably one of the most emotional and significant parts of that ceremony. If you if you get a chance to listen to this song, How Beautiful by Twilight Paris, it talks about the beauty of the body of the Christ of Christ and a lot of different analogies in that song, but one of them is about the radiant bride. And having Lainey sing that with all the emotion that she brought and those words that are so powerful, I think I mean honestly, I think we could put that up on YouTube or something. I mean it was just incredible the power that that the words of that song and the moment, it, I just don't think it could have yeah. it could have been expressed any other way. It was just incredible. It was really special. So a couple of final uh, thoughts. Um, one thing that really surprised me, you know, I, I had in my mind, I had five emotional collapse possibility moments. I had the reception or the, or the rehearsal. I had the walk down the aisle. I had the message. I had the toast, the father, the bride toast, and then the dance. Right. The father-daughter dance. I thought all of those could could end in a challenging way. But um, the dance uh, really surprised me with Lissy. Now, I am not a dancer. I have gifts in other that areas. That is a true statement. Um, and so one <laughs> thing I was really— You are getting better all the time. Thank you, sweetheart. All the time getting better. <laughs> Steps in the right direction. Um, one thing I really appreciate with Lissy, because I think some daughters— Lissy's a dancer. So, you know, right. there was a scenario where, hey, Dad, we're going to learn a dance and we're going to do a whole deal. Yeah. She was very loving and didn't ask me right. to do any of that stuff, which I really appreciated. Um, but it, it, I, one thing I didn't expect during our dance, which was just three minutes or so, there was such a sense of like closure. Yes. Uh, which I did not see yeah. coming at all. Um, obviously, it's which the, I could have toward the end of the night. Yes. Okay, and and the the ceremony's over, and she's now Mrs. Bailey. Um, but the warmth and love, you know, that I felt from her, and hopefully she felt from me at that time, and this real sense of okay, this this chapter of father daughter's closed, and now yes. she's been entrusted to bond. It was it was really powerful, really special for me. And I would second that. That reminded me very much of how important that dance was with R. W. And I really. I felt the same thing that that you don't think of things like that as the dance right. having that emotional significance, but it really did, and it, I, it is that saying goodbye, and it was I I see what you're saying there completely. I also just want to take a moment to say again, I can't thank my friends and family and um, the Hanson family who allowed us to use their barn and. Um, you know, I these names don't mean things to people, but they mean a lot to me with the Bickharts and the Nelsons and the Thompsons and Denise Davis and Buki and Joyce. I could go on and on. I'm fearful saying names because there's so many people to thank. Uh, gatherings, florist and Ashley Bowling, our photographer, they all contributed. It really is a... a the, it takes a village, I think, to have a wedding. I'm not sure it takes a village to raise a child, but I've been saying that it takes a village to have a wedding for sure. At least it did in our parts, in our situation. So um, I I felt so overwhelmed with gratitude that day. And I have to thank Lissy because she was a joy to work with. And it it has its challenging parts. I think every mother and daughter need to know that planning a wedding is is something you would like to do once and you want to enjoy what you can, but you really don't want to do it again because there's some really difficult things about it as well. And Lissy brought so much fresh perspective and, you know, we had our moments that were challenging and then we worked past them. And so that Lissy made the job of Mother the Bride a very wonderful job. Amen. Well, it was an amazing day seeing this Next Generation launch. And as parents, it, it is the real time to celebrate when you see your child take the baton of faith right into the next generation and God makes this new home with this couple that loves Jesus and, and loves each other. So um, I'm sure there's going to be more memories and sharing uh, in future episodes as we have this journey now with two married children. Uh, and we want to encourage you, maybe you've got uh, a family member who is engaged or considering engagement. Tell them about our Preparing for a Visionary Marriage video Bible study. It's a downloadable, streamable, 
video series, nine sessions capturing a biblical Christian view for marriage. It's got a free PDF workbook that goes with that and questions that the couple can use to grow closer uh, to each other. And you can get that at visionaryfam.com, visionaryfam.com. And another encouragement to check out that Perfectly Imperfect online event. That's at perfectlyimperfect.org, the October 15th launch of this online parenting event. You're going to get equipped and you're going to get encouraged. So check it out and make sure you join us for our next episode on Family Vision. Family Vision.